a very good morning to all of my dear students welcome back hope you are all safe and good hope you all have got good breakfast and are ready to take the class so today we are going to start with central problems of an economy in the last class i gave you a little uh, introduction to the three central problems which every economy goes through i hope you all have done the questions which i had sent and completed the notes uh, many of you actually sent your notes to me really good good notes have been prepared but um, all of those who have not sent me the notes do send it <clears throat> okay so let's start with today's topic central problems of an economy and a relatable question i gave in the in that in those sort of questions that uh, does every economy go through these central problems or it is only the poor economies which go through and the rich economies not do rich economies also face central problems so the answer to that question was yes rich economies also face all the central problems of an economy as uh this prop you know the causes of economic problems are universal resources are limited everywhere and wants are unlimited everywhere so due to this central problems of an economy is not faced just only uh, you know just only by developing countries but also by developed and rich countries um together taking all the three problems we had what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce okay now taking uh, every economy just see the nutshell every economy has to allocate its resources i told you to allocate means to put to use because you have limited resources you cannot just waste them you cannot uh, keep spending them the way you like there has to be a certain strategy there has to be a certain planning of how to use our resource, country's limited resources to maximize the society's welfare um and then so we have to allocate the resources and choose from different potential bundles of goods that is what to produce we have millions of goods you know in the economy to be produced but then we have to decide as per economic economic situation which goods need to be produced right now and then we have to, after deciding that we have to select from different techniques of production that is how to produce and then finally we uh, decide in the end who will consume the goods whatever goods have been produced with whichever technique which we have used finally the goods are to be distributed among whom so this third um, central problem for whom to produce is actually the distribution of goods so talking about the first central problem what to produce okay the problem involves uh, this is very important there will be a uh, usually the question is asked if it is a one mark question so what are the three central problems or if it is a three or four mark question then you will be asked um, at most to write a short form on any of the central problems there will be some particular central problem given in the question write a central write a short note on what to produce or maybe write a short note on how to produce or for whom to produce so this is so a note should be prepared for uh, this topic okay what exactly this problem of what to produce this problem again i told you because we have a lot of goods in the society which can be produced by using the same set of resources the same money the same land we can use you know to produce good to uh, to produce wheat to produce rice to produce uh, corn to produce uh, bajra to produce any other non cereal agricultural product to produce cash crops maybe cotton or anything so but actually the point is which exactly has to be produced which good needs to be produced and after deciding the kind of good and services we are to, we are going to be produced we really need to decide in what quantity it has to be produced so there this problem has got two aspects the problem involves selection of goods and services to be produced whichever services also like right now which services are to be produced and the quantity to be produced of each selected commodity after we decide the kind of goods and services we are going to produce we have to decide the quantity also of each selected goods and services now why why do we have this problem called what to produce because 
every economy has limited resources and thus we cannot produce all the goods if we are producing more of one good or service it would usually mean less of others right you know right now we are going through this phase of uh, being locked down due to covid 19 so if uh, and the country has these limited set of resources right now because a lot of economic activities have been put to a halt we have called off the government has called off a variety of economic activities which cannot be performed you know um, within the within being our uh, just being at our homes so the laws the government is facing due to this or even the private sector is facing due to non providing non provision of all these goods and services the income has been cut down you know widely majority of uh, the people especially the business class and all the income has been cut down so government has to decide which goods actually need to be produced and uh, where exactly we need to continue functioning so in this scenario only the basic necessities are kept in mind so we will be only producing food for now and we will be only producing health you know any pharmaceuticals required to fight against coronavirus i don't know if you have read or not about this that um, this drug called hydroxychloroquine some um, this is a kind of drug which is used to fight uh, this is some anti malaria kind of drug and it has been proving useful for uh, covid 19 positive patients it, it has been a, helping them to you know uh, just get out of it so uh, there are only few countries in the world who produce hydroxychloroquine and uh, out of those few countries india is one of them and many nations have requested india to start exporting because of a uh, halt you know because of uh, many suspension of uh, airline services and all so india stopped india banned exports of a lot of drugs of a lot of medicines for that matter so us has requested india brazil has requested india and india has started exporting all uh, these medicines to these countries and the production of this uh, medicine in india has gone 10 times higher as usual uh, you know as compared to the usual production every month because right now the economy needs to produce hydroxychloroquine to help people get out of covid 19 so depending on the situation of the economy depending on the basis of the importance of a certain good every economy decides what to produce so if it is a war like situation like uh, this is kind of a biological war and not a nuclear war so we are we are focusing more on medicines and uh, more on food so that everybody you know nobody sleeps hungry nobody um, just nobody faces starvation and all the government is doing its best to provide people um, the ready food as well as uh, the food the three cereals and all and we are also producing all kind of um, medicines required but right now obviously the country should not be producing anything which has got to do with luxury we are not producing huge cars right now we are not producing you know anything which is related to the comfort level or luxuries um, you know big carpets good interiors for the for hotels or anything related to that economy cannot produce that because so more of one thing would mean less of other so that is why we have to decide if we decide to produce more of food and medicines we have to stop production somewhere else because the same resources used everywhere the money is limited so if we have put more money on producing food and uh, medicines right now so the money somewhere else has to be reduced okay so that is why every economy has limited resources and thus we cannot produce all the goods this is important this is something we'll keep repeating in in our economics more of one good or service usually means less of others if we are producing more of something uh, like uh, you can understand the statement at a local level also in your family also like if for this month we are deciding more you know let us suppose we are deciding to have more of food so if we are deciding to have more of food we will cut down 
uh, our expenditure somewhere else maybe we will not have more of clothes although the market is closed we cannot buy it but still if we are deciding to have uh, you know a sort of trip for that matter or some we want to go on a vacation to celebrate a holiday so we will you know cut down somewhere else we will reduce our expenditures on maybe some extra shopping which we used to do because the again the income is limited so if we are enjoying the production of one good or service we have to reduce the production of other good or service that is what the statement means for example production of more sugar if we are producing more sugar it is only possible by reducing the production of other goods producing more sugar means we have to reduce the production of other goods like i told you if there is a war like situation country would be producing defense goods will be needing more guns more uh, nuclear weapons and all so we have to pre- uh, in that case because the resources are limited country would have to reduce the production of civil goods civil goods is any, uh, anything which has to do with uh, civilians like it can be bread and butter it can be clothes it can be shoes anything which civilians are using so on the basis how do we make this this decision we make this decision on the basis of the uh, scenario on the basis of the current situation of the economy on the basis of the importance of various goods an economy has to decide which goods should be produced and in what quantities so this is the problem of allocation of resources among different goods we have to decide which goods should be produced and in what quantities so uh, let us go on with the meaning of the problem the problem of what to produce has two aspects first the economy needs to decide what possible commodities to produce an economy has to decide which consumer goods that is rice wheat clothes etc and which of the capital goods machinery uh, capital goods means the goods which are used to produce other goods that is tools machines um big plants all these are capital goods because big plants not the uh, not uh, podhe wale plants uh, plants where production takes place the big furnaces and all factories and also these are all capital goods because uh, they are all used in production of other goods and consumer goods which are used by the consumers so economy has to decide which consumer goods we need to produce which of the capital goods we need to produce and in the same way economy has to make a choice between civil goods and war goods if we are producing more of civil goods so less of war goods if we are producing more of luxuries and there will be less of basic necessities if we are producing more of basic necessities there will be less of less of luxuries so this is how decision has to be made after deciding now the second aspect of the problem is how much to produce now let us suppose uh, you know in these days we have decided that we have to produce food and medicines okay now and you know we can also uh, produce some other essential services anything else we are producing these days apart from food and uh, uh, only the services which are possible like you know right now i'm providing you educational services because it was you know possible to deliver it um, be, by being locked down at our homes so we are also providing the services so now we have all decided which all goods and services can uh, to be produced in the economy in this scenario now after deciding the goods to be produced economy has to decide the quantity of each commodity that is selected now let us suppose we have decided educational services have to be given now in what quantity that every day from monday to friday half an hour lecture will be provided to all the students it is not just like it it has not you know it should not be so much lame that we have to produce food and we have to produce medicines and we have to produce educational services so education medical health um a little bit uh, other necessities it is all that we have selected but now we don't know how much of each we should produce okay so what if the country would have produced less of food and just more of medicines and medicines and only medicines so that would also not be the right combination so the problem also decides this problem economy has to decide in see the solutions to these problems are made uh, by the government in if it is a socialist economy where government takes all the decisions if it is a mixed economy like india the decisions are taken by both government and private sector so 
um, these central problems are solved by both private and public sector in India. It means it involves a decision regarding the quantity to be produced of consumer and capital goods like we had decided. If this is a serious situation in the economy so we will be producing some of the consumer goods and some of the capital goods then we have to decide civil and war goods and so on so uh, the problem consists of what possible commodities to produce whether we need to produce war goods or civil goods or whether we need to produce uh, consumer goods or capital goods which kind of goods exactly to be produced and after deciding the goods to be produced economy has to decide the quantity of each commodity okay coming back coming uh, you know just going further to the next problem the guiding principle is allocate the resources for every problem we have this guiding principle that's allocate the resources in a manner which gives maximum satisfaction obviously the society should produce those resources which gives maximum satisfaction you know you cannot uh, that is what i was giving the example rightly you cannot think of uh, economy right now producing uh, luxurious goods it will not give maximum satisfaction at all it will not satisfy in fact the entire economy it will not satisfy anybody so how to go about the problem to allocate your resources that is put your resources to use in such a manner which gives maximum aggregate satisfaction okay coming to the second problem is how to produce that is the selection of technique now whether we want to use more labor and less capital for production of a certain good or we want to uh, you know produce uh, with more capital and less labor so choosing the right technique is very important now we have decided that you know we have to produce wheat now producing wheat can either be done using labor intensive technique labor intensive technique is lit which will have more labor and less capital and capital intensive technique is uh, the short form would be CIT which will have more capital and less labor utilization more capital means we have, will uh, we will be using more uh, machineries to produce that good more irrigational facilities and uh, you know we'll be using uh, tractors and all for harvesting we'll be using threshers for threshing and all those machines and tools will be using so a uh, good can be produced using different techniques of production by technique we mean uh, which particular combination of inputs to be used okay if i'm using this technique means which combination of inputs usually there are two types of inputs labor or capital we have just uh, broadly categorized all the inputs into two categories labor and capital so how much of labor we need to use and how much of capital we need to use this is what it means so by technique we mean which particular combination of inputs to be used generally techniques are classified as lit and cit now the meaning of um, lit and cit where LIT where more labor and less capital is used that is in the form of machines and all so it is like it is generating more employment if you just see the bright side of LIT LIT is giving employment to a lot of people but in CIT as there is more capital as we have more technology as we have more machines and all so I think the production can be faster and you can have more output as compared to LIT so there is more capital and less labor utilization for example textiles can be produced either with a lot of labor and a little capital that is hand loom which we call or with less labor and more capital that is power loom okay that is we are using machines so if we are if using a lot of labor and little capital so we call it hand loom that it is handmade and all this fabric is handmade and if we are uh, producing the textile with more capital and less uh, labor we call it power loom that is uh, it has uh, been used it has been produced with actually capital intensive technique now availability of which how should we decide whether we you know should use lit or cit how to decide this availability of factors and their relative prices helps in determining the technique to be used so this is important what two factors actually decide which technique we should use availability of factors like 
in india we have abundance of labor we have plenty of labor with us so out of the out of these two factors labor and capital india has got more of labor so whichever country should uh, whichever country has more of um, one of the goods you know that country should use that intensive technique if india is abundant india is having abundance of labor so we should actually use labor intensive techniques so that more of the people can get employed in the production process and in that case why our labor is cheap because we have abundance of that so our production cost will also remain low because the in cost of input is a big part of the production cost how much you are spending on hiring your inputs would be a big part of the uh, product produced so um, the factor which is available with us and their relative price that is the price of labor which is the wage rate and the price of machines which is the market price of machines these two factors decide the technique to be used for producing any kind of goods and service and uh, the country the selection of technique is made with a view to achieve the objective of raising the standard of living of the people and to provide employment to everyone just like in india lit is preferred due to abundance of labor whereas countries like usa england etc they prefer cit due to shortage of labor and abundance of capital you know japan and all they are sh they are having shortage of labor so they are highly dependent on robots and all to do all the work so they if they use lit it is going to be very costly for them to produce goods because they do not have that much labor to produce each good and service every good and service they cannot depend on lit labor intensive technique because in japan they are actually having shortage of labor but they are having lot of technology and capital uh, goods so all they can, all they should use is capital intensive technology because in that case the cost they incur on capital would be less as compared to the cost they incur on labor but in our case in case of india as we have abundance of labor and we have less capital if we rely on capital intensive technique we will have to you know uh, spend a lot of uh, money on capital intensive technique but labor is cheap in india so we can always rely on labor intensive technique due to abundance of labor and uh, the guiding principle at the end of this problem is combine factors of production in such a manner so that maximum output is produced at minimum cost the objective is what that we have to we should use that technique uh, out of cit and lit that we are able to produce maximum output at minimum cost using least possible scarce resources and also we should not waste our resources we should try to use as less resources as possible okay so the problem was how um, the problem involves choosing the right technique to produce goods and services the problem of what to produce was choosing the kind of goods the economy needs to produce and the problem of how to produce is the selection of technique if we just summarize this the problem says this bold line the se selection of technique which should be used for production of goods and services then we talked about uh, what is meant by technique technique is the combination of inputs and we have we can have two combination of inputs either more labor and less capital or more capital and less labor then how should we decide these two factors should decide that is availability of factors and their relative prices uh, how much fa uh, of each factor is available in our country how much of labor is available how much of capital is available and what is the price of labor and what is the price of capital on the basis of these two factors we should decide the technique we should use then we talked about the example that uh, how countries are using the right technique that in india due to a labor abundant country we are using lit we actually prefer lit in, uh, in a lot of goods right now india uh, see whenever india would shift towards cit because a lot of automation is there in our country now we are actually uh, much dependent on technology to do all the work and everything so that is why much uh, the demand for labor is going down gdp rate okay rises but corresponding employment is not generated okay to produce that extra goods and services machines are doing everything so labor was never demanded extra labor 
companies don't need because their machines are able to do all the work so in that case employment is not generated but you know they are able to generate more goods and services so for india we should not prefer cit because our labor is abundant so we should uh, actually aim at uh, we should actually aim at providing employment to everyone this is also the objective of this problem the objective is to everybody's standard of living should be raised and employment should be provided to everyone okay and the guiding principle to this problem was that we should choose resources in such a manner that maximum output is produced at minimum cost and using least set of possible scarce resources coming to our third and final central problem that is for whom to produce for whom to produce us which category of people now we have produced the goods we have selected the goods which we have to produce we have selected the quantity of goods which need to be produced of those selected goods and we have decided the technique we are going to use to produce the goods okay whether we are going to use more labor or whether we are going to use more capital to produce the goods now the point is for which category the goods are to be produced who are going to ultimately consume the goods whether to produce goods for more poor and less rich people or to produce goods for more rich and less poor we have uh, both kinds of uh, like every economy has got rich and poor people living so every economy faces this problem also whether they want to produce for more poor and less rich people and with or they want to uh, produce for more rich and less poor okay now since resources are scarce in every economy no society can satisfy all the wants of its people no society can ever satisfy all the wants of it, of its people okay so a problem of choice arises all these three are actually a problem of choices so goods are produced for those people how do we decide goods are produced for those people who have the paying capacity see we are producing the goods but then it is not even bought by the consumers so the good is wasted right so goods are produced for those people who have the paying capacity and your paying capacity depends on your level of income the capacity of people to pay for their goods depends upon their level of income it means the problem is concerned with distribution of income among the factors of production like um who contribute in the production process so whosoever is going to like you know there are four factors of production land labor capital and entrepreneur so like if i'm giving this much land in my production i'm giving on rent to some company my land for producing goods and services i will be receiving rent in return okay and with that amount i can buy goods and services from the society because i have contributed in the country's production process okay let us suppose my friend is providing his laborer services to produce wheat on that land okay and uh, then he receives in return wages and then he is able to buy goods and services from the market whatever he demands so actually what you need to understand is um all those who contribute in the production process the amount of factor of production we contribute in the production process that's the same amount of money you know we uh, get to earn and then we are able to consume our goods and services the economy produces for those people who contribute in the production process you will ultimately get your money for providing your services and you will be able to enjoy goods and services produced in the society this problem you will mainly understand in macroeconomics we will deal with this problem actually for now you just understand that the problem actually deals with the selection of category of people now who are going to consume the goods goods are produced we have decided the technique now how to uh, uh, whom to distribute the goods actually who are actually going to use it okay so the capacity of people it means the problem is concerned with distribution of income among the factors of production who contribute in the production process the people who contribute in the production process their income will be distributed 
so the problem can be categorized under two main heads personal distribution and functional distribution personal distribution is how national income of an economy is distributed among different groups of people i told you this national income entire thing will be uh, focusing in macroeconomics level in class 12th so for now you can just uh, know about the two categories of this problem functional distribution is deciding the share of different factors of production in the total national product of the country see whatever good is produced in the country everybody uh, people have got their share in that product so who much like whoever has got uh, whatever share their share is distributed to them in the form of money and with that money they can earn the income okay like with the, if a person has contributed in the production of pen so and that person has provided his labor services so in return he'll be receiving salary for that and with that amount of salary that person can enjoy that much uh production of the country if he is receiving 30000 uh, per month for producing pens in the economy so then he has got a power to consume he has got an authority he has got this right of 30000 worth of goods and services which are being produced in the country out of the total level, total goods and services produced in the country his share is rupees 30000 because that much he has also contributed in the production process so this is like for whom to produce whosoever uh, has got the paying capacity whosoever has got the income goods are produced for those people that is whosoever contributes in the economic process the country produce for produces for though them so what is the guiding principle for this ensure that urgent wants of each productive factor are fulfilled to the maximum possible extent at least urgent wants need to be fulfilled of each productive factor like right now the urgent wants are food and uh, uh, are good food and good health so these wants are actually fulfilled right now for everyone so these were the three set of central problems which every economy faces what to produce how to produce and for whom to produce that's all for today this this thing we do not have in the syllabus allocation of resources there are two more central problems problem of fuller and efficient utilization of resources and problem of growth of resources we are not doing so uh, this is not in the part of our syllabus so for now we have got these three central problems only what how and for whom to produce i hope it was all clear to you the next topic is a little more conceptual we are actually going to start with the concepts in the chapter so you really need to be more attentive from the next classes the, the chapter is actually picking up the pace so for now it is all i hope it's all clear take care god bless you complete your notes have a good day thank you